for you right now to talk about what is really going on with Shakeology. And it's not all about the probiotics, the prebiotics, the digestive enzymes, but there is some of that too. But there's a context here that I don't think has been communicated very well and about why we need to consume this stuff, why superfoods are a part of our reality, that, um, that this representation of some of the greatest botanicals in the world, this beautiful bag of Shakeology that shows up on your doorstep, of that it's not just a pretty bag and it's not just a, a shy of a billion dollar company. In fact, I don't care about any of that. I care none about it. I, what I care about and what I've dedicated my life to is making sure that, that the ingredients are what they're supposed to be, that they don't have some of the contaminants that are showing up in the marketplace, and that we validate this stuff with our eyes, with our people. And that is something 100% that uh, Beachbody does, okay? So what is Shakeology? It's the kind of the biggest statement I make. If someone was asking in the elevator, it's, a, it's, a, you know, it's, the, it's the delivery system of some of the greatest botanicals in the world. And, and it's so much more than this protein shake. Um, all these ingredients are tested, uh, clinically proven uh, to lower cholesterol and, and help with uh, vitality of the body, and so on and so forth. So what did I even say here? What's the last thing? Okay. So it's, the context is really important to understand. So what is Shakeology not? It is not a magic bullet. Don't tell people that. It's like the same thing of, I, I, this example makes the most sense, I think. It's, you know, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Why did they come up with that statement? Well, they come up with that statement because you know, there's 300 different kind of compounds in an apple that are all beneficial to the health of your body. So it's a representation of a statement that plants are powerful and the right plants eaten over time creates change. So you don't expect to eat an apple and go like, holy shit, I'm stimulated and ready to climb on Everest, right? Now maybe if you take focused energy or energized, maybe that's the case, but, uh, or snorted or whatever. I had to say something that's gonna freak Jonathan out, but something I just, do not snort anything. But, uh, so, so it's not a magic bullet. So imagine now taking that statement of an uh, apple a day keeps the doctor away, an apple. And now, let me expand that idea a little bit. So we have how many ingredients in Shakeology roughly? 70. Okay, 70. 70 of not apples. We have 70 of the greatest botanicals that we can get in this form functionally on the planet. So if you do that every day over time, what do you think is going to happen? Are you going to be better or worse? Is it a little better than maybe saying it's an apple a day keeps the doctor away? The point is, it's not a magic bullet, but it is there to deliver on something we need desperately, and that is this dense nutrition. And I'm gonna get a little bit into the context of what that means as well. Okay, so, not artificial, okay? So we spend a lot of time, no artificial colors, flavors, sweeteners, preservatives, and this was, probably the biggest challenge of the formulation of Shakeology, the unsexy version that there is no way I or we were gonna compromise on this. And believe me, the, the flavoring systems, the flavoring world, and all of that stuff, and the, the subcategories within the FDA allowing certain things to be there, and, but it's really like, yeah, but we don't want that there. And the, the fights, that I would have the screaming matches of owners of flavoring companies that literally, I was like, what's going on? They're like, it's natural, it's natural, it's natural. We tested and it wasn't. And I was like, you're telling me it's natural, but it isn't. What the hell are you doing? So then I look at the bylaws and I'm like, oh, a certain amount of level, a certain amount is okay to be in the, under their natural guidelines. So we had to create new guidelines for us, okay? Um, yeah. 
most of what Shakeology is not. Shakeology has zero ingredients, uh, GMO ingredients, super important. If you haven't looked into genetically modified uh, ingredients, educate yourself, avoid those at all costs. It's an experiment you don't want to take for yourself. Um, so 100% supplier guaranteed. Yeah. Um, what, no, this is gonna tweak you. What is Shakeology not? It's not expensive. Sit with that for a second. And if you start to understand where I'm gonna end you on this talk, you will start to expand on the level, the journey, the effort that it takes to not just throw some powders in a bag, that we have relationships, that we have people out around the world cultivating, finding, processing, testing, all of these botanicals. So, when I'm on a mountain, I was in China, and Rhodiola actually is a, one of my favorite adaptogens. <coughs> Shizandra is in Shakeology. Rhodiola is in the boost, in the uh, focus energy. I was on a mountain at 17,000 feet, me and this Tibetan guy. Because of staying in shape, I was able to follow him. Everyone else, 20 people, couldn't even make it. And I'm sitting there, I have Rhodiola in my hand on the side of a mountain. And I just, in that moment, going, if people realized, truly realized, the value of what they have and the journey that it takes for this thing to get from this mountaintop safely and effectively, which is a big conversation, which is not necessarily what the industry has set forth, that they would value what it is that this really is. And then again, I'm already revealing my last slide, times that by 60 plus ingredients, and you're starting to understand the level at which I've dedicated myself to, and Beachbody has backed that and funded the unsexy parts of making sure that Shakeology is what it's supposed to be and what it said, said it needs to be, okay? So, what is Shakeology? All of these things, so prebiotics, probiotics, easy to say those words, right? Why is that so bloody important? Because this is supporting one of the greatest systems of our body. This is supporting the immune system, the microbiome. Uh, this is giving food for good digestive flora. 80% uh, of your feel-good molecules, your serotonin, is produced in your gut. I'm not saying, I'm not making the claim that uh, you will have all of these things, but all I'm saying is prebiotics and probiotics are things that support the body being healthy. And when the body's healthy, especially the microbiome, it can radically affect your feel, you know, how you feel about yourself and how things like that occur. And I, I'm just gonna stop there because I know Jonathan's gonna sweat, sweating back there. But the point is, start to learn about this stuff. They're not just buzzwords. These are, there's some real thought that went into the responsibility that I took on, that, that Isabel took on, and that Carl took on, in that this was a responsibility. What do people need? What do they require in this day and age? And that's how Shakeology was birthed. Enzymes, enzymes are behind not just digestive, they're behind every metabolic process in the body. When you lack enzymes, you're breaking down. It's like, it's like, it's like wanting to build a road and all of the stuff gets, you know, the concrete and, and sand and all that stuff shows up and then you have no labor force. You have no, no one to kind of actually take those materials and put them and make a, a road. So that's kind of what en enzymes are in the body. They help facilitate, they help break down, they make, make what wasn't uh, possible, okay? Anti antioxidants, phytonutrients. What does that mean? Well, antioxidants are fighting the battle of us breaking down over time. If you have, if you're consuming foods that are high in free radicals, uh, I'll give you a hint. It's processed. It has golden arches. It, it is boxed and, and canned and all of these things that largely are void in the cellular nutrients. The essence that your body can actually use, assimilate, way beyond carbs, proteins, and fats. Let's move be 
beyond that conversation, right? This is about the nutrients that are in, endemically within the plant, and we identify them to make sure that they're still there and so that they deliver on what it is that they're ultimately here to do, and that's helped to facilitate us. Okay? Um, and then moving quickly, adaptogens. How many of it, how many of you in here, the show of hands, has have been stressed in the last week? <laughs> and, and all of you who are not putting your hand up are totally fine. Totally <laughs> it's stress. There's stress everywhere. And stress, I'm gonna get into a little further, so I'm gonna hold my thought on that. But adaptogens are interesting, <coughs> interesting foods. So you have maca, shizandrum, uh, cordyceps, um, uh, uh, what are some other ones? I totally forgot. Uh, uh, astragalus, ashwagandha. All of these things are compounds within it. They're adaptogenic. So when you take them in, them in it's not like caffeine, where caffeine is kind of a linear shot. If you take that in, you're going to get stimulated. Adaptogens are one of those things that help modulate and deal with the effects of stress, okay? These are some of my favorite compounds and favorite plants in the world, okay? So these are some of the things that you have to understand. Right here are some of the most ancient, anciently used plants in the world, and we happen to have them safely and effectively in Shakeology. So then again, blend of proteins. So it's not just one, it's not just thing, it's kind of this effect that all of these proteins are essentially giving more than protein. But we put these in categories, but they're multiple amino acids, multiple different angles that they're helping facilitate in the body. Again, botanicals, beneficial compounds, um, plant compounds, the important thing you need to understand is we, we get so caught up in uh, kind of linear thinking, certainly about health, right? So I have a heart issue, I need to go to a specialist, a heart specialist, and therefore he's gonna solve my issues, and therefore, and his heart specialist is further and deeper away from the whole, right? He's further and deeper away from what the hell's going on in your body, and he's isolated. I'm not saying that that's not appropriate for acute things, but the context here is an apple a day keeps a doctor away. A bunch of plants that have beneficial compounds have a pleomorphic effect. So they're helping you be healthy, thrive, repair, adjust, and ultimately, I always say this, like, the, the main reason I, I'm fascinated with superfoods, I'm gonna jump to the next one, is that I don't want to just walk around and exist. I wanna use what are available to us so that I can thrive, so that I can do what I want to do and not be limited by the limits of my body. And 99.9% .9 of the time, we are cultivating a habit to either leave us lacking, or we're gonna shift that and cultivate a habit that starts building our strength. So that, that's really what we're talking about. So superfoods, I, I love this because I never saw it until we were putting these slides together, and Oxford literally, it's always been like, well, superfoods are not really, uh, uh, there's not a definition, so I'll just make up one. But now Oxford actually stepped up and they said, superfood is a nutrient-dense food considered to be especially beneficial to health and well-being. Okay, so that's what a superfood is. So per calorie, this is what I say, it's got more going on that's beneficial to you than say a donut, right? So it's got those beneficial vitamins, minerals, phytonutrients, antioxidants, and we put those all again in a shake. Okay, so this is the context. This is my argument, whether I'm involved in Shakeology or not. I say this, I, I uh, make this argument, 
that because we are in a situation where we, we have known for a very long time, over the last hundred years, that our soils are depleted. You may or may not have heard this, but this is real. So a few of these are indications. Guess what? The number one place that has mastered monocropping and stripping soil is. Welcome to America, right? Amazing thing that they created this mono cropping, agricultural revolution, increased our population, but also increased the potential for disease and not, ultimately not doing well, okay? And then again, down the list, you can see that all major countries are suffering. And then you take things like this. So one indicator, so we have like 90% of us are suffering from potassium deficiency. So potassium, it's an electrolyte. It's one mineral. These are just studies that grab one thing and, 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 and vastly see how undernourished we are. So, now the drum roll. So, if we are then already starting from an undernourishment, and then you add on, dun, 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 the stress, the weird stress we're under. And I'm not just talking about your emotional stress or you're bummed out with your partner. I'm talking about the toxin, the toxin. There's 70,000 new toxins emitted in our atmosphere. Uh, of that, maybe 10% are actually tested. So we are, we are getting rained down by toxins. We're getting hit with uh, EMFs that if you don't know, our body's electrical. So if you think uh, sitting in a building under lights, like I am, uh, doesn't affect you over time, it absolutely does. Our food has toxins. We've made up Franken food. We've created weird products. Uh, it changed uh, these things called xenobiotics, where they're literally man-made. They're not food anymore. So we are in this weird place. So. Now add up, we're already mineral deprived, and now you add up just this gnarly kind of stress, and the more you need stress, or the more you have stress, the more nutrient needs you have, okay? This is my argument for why we need nature's bounty, why we need these nutrient-dense foods, okay? So, next one. So really, this is ultimately about helping your body with stress. It's about putting the quality back into your life. I mean, how many of you have stories where you did a few adjustments and you started eating well, you started drinking a little more water, you started drinking Shakeology consistently, and you had benefits. The thing is that it's not like, again, we got to get off of this idea that if I drink it today or this week, that it's going to cure all of my issues. Because those issues, unless you have a, literally a, a congenitive problem, an acute accident, uh, you have participating in, in opening the door for chronic disease. So. The idea here is that let's create healthy habits again. Exercise, eating well, eating your superfoods, drinking your shake, to help shut those doors down so that you can actually not have to drag this chemistry set around. And it's amazing to me that someone of 30, 40, 50, 60, even uses age as some sort of excuse not to live. And I don't know about you guys, but that's not what it is. It's about the habits that you have set for yourself and your life. And that is going to contribute to your health and your life, or it's not. So where are your priorities? We have created such an amazing shake here and backed it up that we've eliminated the barrier to entry. I spent over a year on the formulation. You wouldn't think it should be, 
but over a year on the formulation, just working on the taste, so that we could overcome the somewhat strong botanicals that are in there, so that it wasn't a barrier. Like I would, for me, I plug my nose and throw things back, I don't care. But if you don't have that experience, and if you're coming from the place of you've been manipulated by your own senses, then that barrier is, I'm gonna throw up eating this, and that's not gonna help people. So we spent a lot of time making sure it's safe. Like I said, the flavoring, no artificial cover, colors, flavors, and sweeteners, but that we had to put the extra work in so that it was actually a healthy, good tasting alternative. Okay, so again, a little more uh, on superfood that kind of covered that. We'll switch to the. So this is the unsexy and really, really, really important aspect of our quality assurance. And, and I'm going to jump to this last slide. I'm doing so good on time, it's amazing. Um, uh, I'm going to jump to this last slide in a second that gives another context to what I'm just saying here is that we visit the farmers, we audit facilities, meaning that we send our own people around the world following the tracks of maybe some strange discovery years before uh, that I had and, and the quality assurance team comes in going, cool, that's all fun and games, Darren, but where's the process? And is it gonna meet our quality standards? And I tell you what, unfortunately, most facilities fail. We fail, I think, 90% of them. So we have to come in and bring these countries, ultimately, the culture up to the standards that we need. So it's a big deal that a lot of these exotic superfoods are conveniently in your shape. And, and let me just say, millions and millions of dollars are spent with the quality assurance team flying around the world to make sure what's in that bag is in that bag and what's not in that bag is not in that bag. And many, many companies cannot say that. Because A, they don't have the money. They don't have the right placement of passion versus care. Um, and, and this is extremely, extremely important. And, and, and puts really, ultimately puts a line in the sand of us versus anyone else. Now, the thing is that you can't tell by turning over a label. It's important to look at labels. Absolutely, it's important to question. I get questions every day. Hey, what about this? What about that? Someone said this is not what it's supposed to be. I'm like, well, I don't know what you're talking about, but our, this is our quality assurance standards, and this is what we do. So again, these are the layers that we need to start communicating so that we very clearly, not marketing, just real, real stories, real things we're doing, real people we're affecting around the world, real quality assurance standards that, that are happening. Uh, and this is ultimately the journey of a superfood, okay? So I started to talk about it, and you're starting to get it, right? So I threw this thing together. Thank God uh, Jonathan didn't annihilate this thing uh, with this quality sense, but this is it. This is a path of a superfood. So this is, let's, let's, let's call this, um, let's call this Shazandra. I'm gonna give an example, right? I like her, it's one of my favorite herbs. It's a great name for like a, a dog. I, 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 it definitely is gonna be the name of my female dog. So, so let's say number one, I gotta use my glasses for this because I don't even, I, I don't wanna skip anything, but um, let's say number one, superfood hunting. So identifying, just going out. And I, I, I've gotten myself in so many situations, it happens in all kinds of ways. I have people reach out to me, I have things I discovered on another trip. There's a, a million different things that can happen to kind of lead me to this place of like, holy shit, this is amazing and no one knows about it, okay? Number two, meeting the farmers. Then who's actually growing it? Who's actually doing it? And then we get into testing. Then we see what the quality is. Then, we're, then we start setting up the growing standards. How can we utilize this plant? And then we harvest correctly. When's that time? What's gonna not denature this thing? 
Because ultimately, we have to move into processing correctly. How do you get this powder from this thing? So it's carefully, sometimes, an extraction process takes place in terms of schizandra, or in, for the most part, most of these are whole food-based, so we have to carefully dry them and not burn them, annihilate them, and allow for the compounds not to be there. So processing and then testing. So now we're testing, we're fingerprinting. What does that compound, what is it? What's in there, and is, is it at the level that we want, okay? Also, what is not there? In, the environment's got a lot more environmental pollutants, so we have to test for those things so that it doesn't end up in our product. So that's tested in the country of origin, and ultimately, that's packaged and sent individually. It meets to our, uh, our main facility. We have a couple of co-packers that take the, the entry point of all the, the ingredients, and then quarantined, tested again as an individual, and then ultimately it gets its way back to an alchemical blend, uh, a particular process of blending to make sure that everything is blended correctly, uniform, and then it's shipped and shows up to your door. And Shazandra started in I'm working on another project, I can't even say it, so I'm, not, I'm gonna just stop myself, but it's a very cool potential of a preservation aspect of Shizandra that hopefully we can get locked in. But Shizandra came from, a, from, the, from the forests in, in unknown China, and that had to move through this process, and now extrapolate that. Every ingredient, different country, different environment, different mountaintop, different jungle, uh, and that ultimately is the journey of Shakeology.